greetings and welcome to Outlaws to the End. I'm Brent Adams, joined by the man who is with me on the show yet again, Mr. Lauren Baumgarten. Welcome, Lauren. <laughs> don't sound so. That is. Don't sound so enthused. The worst introduction. A hundred. No, wait. How many? Two. Almost two hundred and fifty episodes. You and I have done together. I thought it was okay, given the fact that I accidentally pasted in the intro from our Uncharted Four opening. <laughs> the and, man who is the Sam to my Nathan. And I got about five words into it and realized that I was not going to be able to continue reading without us having to restart, which I'm still thinking might happen anytime now <laughs> hey man it's nothing if not accurate i am the man with you on the show that's right and uh and this is the show where we are going to talk about e3 2016 you all have been talking about it we've been talking about it with you a bit i know that uh we, lauren and i were both hanging out in separate chat rooms because we can't fucking stand to be around each other for not on the <laughs> show we're, we're not even actually recording this together brent, brent already laid down his half of the show i'm actually texting to lauren right now and he's just responding to my uh, <laughs> my text but uh that's right we were both hanging out in mumble on sunday and monday chatting with you guys we were all watching live streams together that was a lot of fun that was a yeah lot i did of a lot fun. of uh, i did actually the bulk of my chatting uh in the chat client uh, which I really actually enjoyed. I was in Mumble just a, just a little bit, but uh, I've been on Mumble a lot this last week playing Overwatch, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, totally, totally fun playing with uh, Alex and Patch and Reminder and, and just t- all the guys from, uh, um, I was going to say EBA, Outlaw Gamer Crew. Well, they crew, are from EBA. That's true. They are. That's yeah, true. No, it's been a great time. But I did a lot of my E3 watching, uh, all of my E3 watching, chatting in the chat client, and there were about 60 people in it. It was awesome. Yeah. I, I had a great time. Um we we made uh, we made a lot of jokes at the expense of EA and Ubisoft, as you can well imagine. But uh, we uh, we we got through it, uh, all except for the PC uh, gaming show, which we'll talk about. That that one was nigh unwatchable. But um, that is not where the story starts. The story starts sometime with a different unwatchable Sunday afternoon with EA. We had a lot of discussion, Lauren. About Battlefield 1, which obviously was a big headline coming into and out of the EA press conference. And let me just tell you how much I love coming into and out of EA. But anyway, the point is that as a Battlefield player, I am kind of curious to know, what do you think? um, What do you think of Battlefield 1? The discussion that we were having, just to sort of frame the question with a bit more context, is that it's been such a high energy exciting kind of gameplay staple that's that that franchise is there any risk that by setting it in world war one that they're going to lose some of that excitement Uh, i think there is and i i think i think uh particularly with i think in one of the strangest moves i've seen in recent memory gaming wise yeah i think releasing titanfall 2 a week after battlefield one um Maybe if, the worst idea ever. Maybe it just seems odd. It seems like you're really splitting the the audience. I mean, the audience is is online multiplayer, first person shooter players. Yeah, uh, I love both franchises and both games. And now I'm not going to buy both games simultaneously. I simply won't because the reality is, is when we play, uh, we play um, as a group, and and especially in those first few months, we play a lot as a group. And so, um, uh, it's it's a weird decision. And I think you make a good point, Brent, uh, where if it feels like it's slowing down to some people, there is an absolutely w- fantastic, uh, faster-paced alternative just seven days down the road. Now, I don't. I need to clarify that I don't necessarily feel that way. Like Fatui and some of the other people I was talking with, they they were kind of raising that point. But I said, you know, I think if they were making a historically accurate kind of video game, that might be an issue. But I think that they don't give a shit about historical accuracy. They give. They give all, all the shits they have to give are over in the corner of the room where exciting gameplay is sitting. Oh, you know? absolutely. And There's so no I question. Think that, I think that they will they will basically try to keep the gameplay feeling that they've always had, just dress it up in World War One style. But I, I you know, I I don't think that they're going to sacrifice on that. I, I think that's more important than just about anything. No, but if they're right, if they're right, um, there's a, there's a, there's a really good viable alternative other than Call of Duty. You know, sure. a lot of a lot of people tend to pick one or the other camp in terms of Battlefield or Call of Duty, but right. Titanfall, I don't think, uh, necessarily falls into that sort of us versus them mentality. And so um, there, there's another alternative there. And I, and I just think if they're right, that that's another reason why their release dates are weird. But I think those release dates are weird. But Are you getting, um, I are you get, getting Battlefield 1? 
I, you know, I think the, I, I think the answer to that question is probably yes. Yeah. Um, I have to tell you in all honesty that the fucking EA press conference was one of the most annoying things I've watched in a long time. And particularly the battlefield one event agree was, was just awful. And, and, and by the time I just didn't give a shit. I mean, I, I spent all week giddy like a, a schoolgirl uh, about seeing the battlefield one footage and, and, by the time it was happening, I couldn't care less, and I was sick of it by the time it was over. And I'm really, it, it affected my enth- enthusiasm, and I'm uh, having to go back now and, and watch like the level caps and jack frags and these sort of dedicated streams that don't have any of those asinine ass. Did I say asshole yet? Yeah, ass fuck yeah. holes. Ass fuck holes. Doing that, they keep hiring to do this commentary that are fucking awful um, over them, and so. Uh, uh, it got repetitive. I also, I also wish they would have uh, demoed two maps. I think they could have given two maps, given that they were doing an hour of gameplay, so people could see some different stuff. But yeah. Um, uh, so I mean, yeah. The reality is, I will probably get Battlefield One, but at this exact moment, I'm a, I'm a little more intrigued by Titanfall Two. Well, let's talk about Titanfall Two because the next two games are FIFA 17 and Madden 17. And right, who cares? I- Although I did think it was interesting on FIFA 17 that there, what was the boxing game where they. They fight, turned fight it night. into fight night. I fight think. night. Yeah, they, they're kind of fight nighting FIFA, where they're doing that whole story thing. Yeah, you know, we were talking about that, and actually, let, let's let's talk about that for just one second. It almost seems now that it's actually happening, it almost seems inevitable that somebody would have put two and two together and said, "Wait a minute, sports game, sports movie, sports game, sports movie," and you know, like smashed them together. You know, just. In in hindsight, it seems like a pretty obvious leap to make that you know you could sort of attach a story to a sports game and make like a <laughs> a campaign out of it or something. Well, it caught. Co- I mean, it caused me to play Fight Night. I hadn't. I don't remember the last. I think literally, honestly, and this is. I think the last f- boxing game I played was Punch Out. Yeah. Uh, in the original that? in the arcade <laughs> in the arcade. Right. 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 Uh, uh, Twenty years ago and uh, Fight Night. I thought the story looked interesting and it caused me to get the game and I enjoyed the game. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, yeah, so uh, I well, it was you know, it's a good point because you and I tend to play games for stories. And yeah. if somebody comes along and says, "Man, you got to fucking play, try FIFA 17," it's like it's like fucking Rocky. Like the game's fucking incredible. Like it's got this great story and the, you know the cast, the acting, and blah blah blah. Yeah. Like I'd play FIFA 17 if somebody told me that. I'd play college football if Rudy was the main character. Exactly. <laughs> it's not like Sean Astin's got anything else going on because we all know that fucking Goonies two movie ain't going to happen. So Titanfall two because fuck yes. Madden seventeen Titanfall yes. two. Um, what do you think, man? I mean, the 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 first Titanfall. It's not like it was. It's not like the game was hurting for all that much. I mean, it was a fun game. It was fast paced. Did really really well. It was only on two out of the three major platforms, but they seem to have done okay outside of that. Uh, you and I both played the beta. I think you actually end up getting the game. Uh, getting the game, yeah, I played you? the shit out of the game. I, I, I think it's a first multiplayer game where I, you know, platinum or whatever. I, I wrapped around uh, the characters and back <laughs> you, up to you wrapped around what? I, I, I wrapped, not reached. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I played the shit out of Titanfall, and I, I absolutely fucking loved it. Yeah. And uh, this to me looks like I, you know, I don't, I don't know that the game needed a single player, but I'm excited now to check it out and. Uh, um, they have six titans now instead of three. All the titans are new. Yep. They have the grappling hook is, is a loadout item. Right. Not every pilot's gonna have the grappling hook, but they have the grappling hook. Uh, new weapons. The, the animations for the pilots I keep hearing over and over are just phenomenal, and I, I think it looks fucking great, man. And like I said, I'm really pissed off that they're releasing it a week after Battlefield. I will probably end up getting both. What about the what about the single player side of Titanfall? I, I'm excited for it. I, I want to see more. I mean, I really one thing I'm craving now. And I've been I've been scouring the web over the last twenty four hours. Just some actual gameplay footage, yeah, uh, of multiplayer, and, and I would like to see some gameplay footage of single player. It didn't it didn't do a a, a ton for me yet, but uh, it, you know, it just <laughs> it's a fifty fifty shot, Brent. I mean, if it's a, I'm more lately, likely to get a game if it's got single player as opposed to just multiplayer only. It's it's rare, even like quote unquote multiplayer only games that I get, like say Swotor or The Division tend to have, you know, some kind of single player esque campaign story to them. Sure. So I, I have to say that for my own part, it definitely puts me more in like I, I'm probably not going to get Battlefield one. I, I don't really see myself playing that, but I could see myself getting Titanfall two and and you know Battlefield one will have a single player. I know it will, but I've played Battlefield right. campaigns uh, single player campaigns before, which is 
why I'm not really interested in playing. Well, it. well and that's my point is if it I I look man, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare was a fucking awesome game. Yeah. And, and the single player was fucking brilliant. Not there were there were faults to it, but it was really good. Yeah. And um I I love for a game like that. Battlefield Bad Company too. It was a, had a wonderful single player, but mm-hmm. um and I and I love for games to to have great single players, but lately C- C- Call of Duty and uh, um, Battlefield have had shit, and so I but I have no problem pay, pay, paying and playing. I mean, I play hundreds of hours of Battlefield. Yeah, I bought Overwatch, which was only forty bucks, and I'm just completely having fun with everybody. And I don't expect. Um, I, I don't care if I mean I, I play. I paid and played for Titanfall. And I got my money's worth. I had a really, it was a really great game. And so, yeah. if if they produce a compelling single player, You'll that's go. fucking all the better. All right. So, speaking of compelling single player, fingers crossed, Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> you haven't, you wouldn't know anything about that from watching the E3 N- presentation. No, um, I, I'm really, I'm really, really cautious on this one. Like, I, I'm not at, quite at the point where I want to sort of just you know, kick it in the back of the head. Um, I'm not quite there yet, but you know, like leading up to the show and everything, people were saying that they're going back to more of a tone of the first game. It, it's more about exploration. It's more about you sort of being the alien in this, this new galaxy that, uh, that, that the game is, is going to take place in. And it's more about that discovery of these different civilizations and cultures and the, the story that arises out of that. I like all of that. As you know, despite some of the the aspects of the first game that were clunky, the first Mass Effect remains my favorite, uh, and it's mostly because of that kind of tone, like just that that feeling you got playing that game, and that feeling that you could kind of go anywhere and you know and just explore and you know do things. It really it felt much more like it was about exploration. The subsequent two felt like you were just assembling a team, yeah, mostly. The, the subsequent two were definitely about the story that was taking place and, you know, and it was more sort of about the momentum of that, that narrative. So I like all of that, if that's what they're actually doing, but you know, I I think as, as some people have have written about and talked about online it almost like, it doesn't really feel like EA is in the role-playing game business anymore. And so when they say that we're going to go back to a feel more like the first mass effect, that is maybe it's, it's a larger U-turn, for EA than, than maybe even they realize. So I don't know. I'm, I'm skeptical, somewhere between skeptical and cautiously optimistic. I really want Mass Effect Andromeda to be a gameplay experience like the first Mass Effect, but I'm not sold on that yet. When is it due out? Do you know, is it early 2017? Yeah, let, let, let me uh, go ahead and talk about it. I'll look it up while we're talking here and find out. Yeah, I mean, to be thing. honest with you, Brent, the... the, the um, the Mass Effect stuff that was in the in the uh, conference was was almost meaningless to me. You know, I mean, I, I'm March. I, I'm not March 2017. March 2017. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I simply need to see more about this game. It could go either way. I I love the Mass Effect series. I I loved one, two. Um, I enjoyed, but I really felt like two was all about assembling this team. And that was it. And that was like the thread. The, there wasn't yeah. like a ton of story. I mean, there was, but the story was go to here and get this person, then go here and get that person, then go and, here and get that person. And hurry, because the universe is about to explode. Yeah, and it wasn't a nuanced and well-written story, if you ask me. And then Mass Effect 3, uh, I, I simply didn't get through. I mean, I played it for, uh, I don't know, maybe half of the game or so, mm-hmm. and f- don't remember why I put it down, but I did, and I went back to it once, and I, I never got lost in it. And maybe, maybe I should try it again, but... Um, so I want I want Mass Effect to be great again, I guess. But I'm also um, uh, I, I'm not I, I'm not um, teetering on the fence with excitement because I I don't have confidence that it necessarily will be. And I feel like I just need to see more. And right now we're not seeing anything. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, speaking of things that we're not seeing anything about, let's talk about Star Wars and EA. Yeah. No shit. Um, Where's the Death Star, motherfuckers? I, I'm so disappointed that we didn't get more than what we did. Um, I just uninstalled that game. Uh, Battlefront. You still have, yep. Yeah. So obviously, you know, they're continuing to support Battlefront. Um, and there's and there's more on the way. We've got this. Uh, we've got this this visceral game which we caught like the briefest glimpse at. 
just you know very very the Amy Hennig game yeah the Amy Hennig game just this right. uh this brief look at that and then you know we found out that Respawn is doing something uh yeah that was interesting that was I, I'm I'm that cur- that really surprised me actually considering that whatever whatever I imagine Respawn doing is almost certainly going to be in competition with Battlefront. It is kind of interesting. Didn't they? Wasn't that the one that they said was a third person action adventure, or or were they? Was that Visceral? Um, well, we know the Visceral is a third person action. Adventure. Right, I thought I don't, they had said. I don't the know if they. Too, but. I don't know if they gave up gave up those details on the respawn yeah. game. I, I can't remember now. And also, I was watching it with you know like six of the outlaws, and we were all you know just kind of heckling the heckling <laughs> heckling the screen and laughing at it. So mystery science three thousand again. Uh, yeah. So anyway. I guess the the bottom line is that I was really hoping that I mean it's like I was hoping Star Wars would be a bigger deal. Now they made a big deal out of Star Wars at the press conference, but at the end of the day, it they wasn't didn't say much. Yeah, I mean, like like the biggest things that we got were you know things on Battlefront, a little bit on Swotor, and then, Battlefront wasn't even that big. Yeah, and and then some teases. Yeah, it was really it was really more of a like something of a not very sizzling sizzle reel saying, yeah. hey, just so you know, we care about. Star Wars, and we're working on a lot of Star Wars we're stuff. On a lot of Star Wars, and, and I get that these things take time. You know, the bottom line is they probably don't have that much to show right now. If they, if they had it, they'd show it. I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would much rather have come out of that conference with you know a big swinging dick over their Star Wars franchises than than not. So, uh, I you know we're, we're just we're still waiting. We're going to be waiting for a while to kind of see the fruit of any of these labors. Yeah, I. Everything you said about Star Wars is true, I, and, and I, I so overall, I think that I got to say the EA conference was a difficult one for me. I went straight in; it was my most anticipated, yeah, because I was super excited about Battlefront. It went straight into Battlefront, and so I put the two together: the conference uh, and the the Battlefront, a uh, Battlefront Battlefield, Battlefield. Um, uh, gameplay session, and it was just fucking brutal. And I just left it angry, and I just thought, I mean, it was it was up there with me, and we'll talk about this, but with the PC gaming conference it was like unwatchable for the most part yeah. it was it was it was annoying so i hated ea press conference so the, fuck you the ea one was difficult to, to get through there were parts of the ubisoft one equally so but i thought that awkward but i but less annoying i think awkward but less annoying but ubisoft had some brighter bright spots at least for me personally uh, just dance 17 just dance 17 was not among those <laughs> i actually kind of, in all seriousness i kind of thought that opened they always do something for just dance i love the fact that they just did like just dance and barely even bothered to talk about it yeah. to like say the title and moved on but i actually thought the opening sequence like we were we were joking around about it all of us on chat we were like oh fucking just dancing about halfway through the song like four people we're like, actually, this isn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of, the song was great. It was Queen. It was kind of fun. They turned it around. Yeah. Uh, something they haven't turned around is the <laughs> the animus, the the outrage people feel for Watch Dogs, because <laughs> because I don't think Watch Dogs Two won many people over. We were uh, we were laughing all the way to the bank about Ubisoft and their predilection for hipster protagonists and yes. and on and on and on. Yeah, I you know I, he I used will to be say, a DJ, but now he's going to save the world. That's right. I will say that um, there's very little chance I will get this game. Yes, there's there's a hundred percent no chance I will get it on day one. Although I yes. can hear the outlaws going, yeah, whatever, Lauren. <laughs> um, but there, there's not. You, do, but you you tend to go back on your word. Day of sex. I will say. <laughs> I will say that um, it does look like an improvement over the first one. The parkour system I thought looks kind of cool, yeah. and I do like seeing a black uh, leading man. That's I think that's uh, it's good. It's nice to see. Right. Uh, it's unfortunate that it stands out um, the way that it does. Yeah, such that I that I notice it. I mean, that's kind of sucks. Right. Um, but uh, um, uh, but it does look like an improvement. So I give him props for that. But I still don't think I'm interested, and in I think I'm still too emotionally scarred from the first one. Uh, let's talk about something that improves on everything. And that's Trials of the Blood Dragon. Have you wait before you say that? Have you played it? No, I have it. Have you? No, and I I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me! You took Trials and Blood Dragon and mashed them together, Come on. and it's available now. Come on, man! Uh, that's like but, that, that, that's like like the, maybe the greatest moment from their whole press conference. It was, and uh, until I read the reviews of it on Steam, and they are extremely mixed. Oh no! <laughs> they were overwhelmingly negative at the beginning. They were like, "Fuck this game! It's not a trials game. It's not yeah. blood drag. It's like ne- it's neither really." And it kind of sucks when you're not on the motorcycle and 
So I haven't gotten it yet. I thought it was a very cool moment, though. It, it was it, like it. It really, really was funny as hell, and you know, just it just kind of calls to mind the lunacy of Blood Dragon. But if I mean that at its core, what made Blood Dragon great is that it was fun to play. In addition to right. all the absurdity that goes into it, and if it doesn't have that, if it doesn't have those gameplay fundamentals, and it's not like the trial series is hurting for that, that's kind of disappointing to hear. I love that they did that, though. I fucking love that they were like, "What if we took these two things and mashed them together?" People would think that was fun, and that just and they did it, you know. Yeah. And I just think that's great. Yeah, good, good on them. Yeah. Now, this next title that uh, that Ubisoft showed off, I don't remember this one. I don't know if it's just slipped my mind or if I was busy actually playing the division. Because I was grind, I was grinding Intel and collectibles in the division while we were watching, so I may have been concentrating on the division when this one was going on. But uh, tell me about Grow Up. That's the um, is it Grow Home or that 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 indie title that was on uh, on PlayStation and and uh, I think it was on PC too. Go Home with a little no, yeah. not Go Home. It's a little ro- or Grow. It's a little robot that climbs up the giant beanstalk and yeah, didn't play it. Uh, this is neither did I. This is this is just the this is the follow up to that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I'm completely clueless on that one. Um, I can't remember the uh, whatever. I can't. It doesn't matter. Neither one of us. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm sequel, glad we sequel spent, to Grow Home. I'm glad we spent a minute figuring it out. Moving yeah, on. No shit. Uh, Star so the next stuff Trek is VR stuff. Bridge Crew, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> now this I am into. I have been waiting on this game since I was like 10 years old. Four. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. I'm excited for yeah. this. Um, uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah. I, I haven't read. You know, honestly, I haven't read it. I love Star. I fucking love Star Trek. Yeah. I haven't, I've read nothing about it. I thought it was awesome that they got the actors from the, the various Star Treks to get in there and play it yeah. in VR. Um, I, I, I just honestly, I, haven't, I mean, I, I'm totally down with this if it turns out to be a good, uh, a, a good game, but I haven't looked at anything about it. Eagle Flight. Which is their other VR one? They had Palmer Lucky on stage yeah. playing. Uh, that game, I'm fucking excited about. Right. The- um, I I don't want to gloss over the Star Trek thing too fast because I want to go back and just say, <laughs> like, basically to me, like, I know it's not going to be as in depth, probably, you know, because they're trying to make a mainstream game here. But to me, it feels like somebody looked at like the Artemis Bridge Simulator game uh, that, that that's been out for PC for a while and said. Hey, look! Like they're making a Star Trek game that where you have to have you know like multiple people kind of you know like manning positions and all that stuff. We could actually do that with actual Star Trek and sell it, and I bet people would buy it. And it's like, yeah, that's what yeah, we of course told they you. Would. We all told you that. But anyway, um, I live in hope. I live in hope for that game. I, I I'm terrified of it on the one hand because it's one of those. There's like a Johnny Come Lately kind of thing to it, and the Johnny Come Lately is Ubisoft, and so I'm immediately a little bit nervous about are they going to understand like what makes this kind of game good and and give it enough just you know give it enough uh, enough substance that it's actually compelling to play, or are they gonna are they gonna watchdog it basically? So again, I haven't I haven't read or watched usually most of these games i'm usually up on and i haven't seen anything really about bridge crew i haven't no, looked at I, it. I, i'm dying to follow up on it. i just haven't had time yet if, if eagle flight is any indication people's have their reaction to eagle flight has been fantastic right and if eagle flight is any indication I, first of all i just love the fact that ubi's already jumping into vr yeah. i think it's fucking great me too um and if it's any indication it looks like you know they're serious about it well and i think i think that's true of most things that we saw from e3 this year in regards to vr I thought that I thought that what people were doing with VR uh, seemed to have some substance to them. Like, like they didn't seem to all kind of be like kitschy hook games um, that that uh, that you know like people look at and say, "Well, that's fine," but that's not really a game. That's that's just a demo. Uh, I, I, right, I thought yeah. that there was some some cool game ideas uh, in relation to VR. Let's move on to what might be the most important moment of E3 2016. South Park, the fractured. Butthole. Thank you for saying the title properly. Yes, well, you have to, don't you? Yeah, people are killing me just calling it the fractured butthole. Yeah. Um, when, and, and that's when, just outright is just a mispronunciation. When they teased this, when they teased this last year, I, I when they much, teased the butthole. Yes, they they teased the butthole, my butthole, their butthole. Uh, I I kind of lost my my cookies on it, and this year, seeing like seeing the actual gameplay, seeing like where the parody is kind of coming from, 
the you know the the constant you know sort of satire of like the the Marvel Cinematic Universe and you know like the Phase One and Two and Three and all the different the various solo films and TV crossovers and stuff. I was just I was beside myself. I was so happy. I know. It's, you watch it and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't give a shit about the gameplay. I'm sure it's going to be great. The gameplay. I just shut up. I want to watch this. Exactly. It was fucking. A st- I, it's just having said you guys that. The pl- gameplay does look good. The I I, I uh, you know I keep forgetting about this game honestly, um, and it's not on my like radar of most anticipated games. I right? definitely did not go into, uh, and it's coming out December December sixth. I think. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't go into the E three like thinking. Oh, I'd like to see some stuff about South Park, but South Park: The Stick of Truth was one of, if not the most fun, just outright fun gaming experiences I've had in the last five years, ten years. I mean, it was yeah. just it was it was I was just amazing. tackling out loud for hours playing that game, and uh, this is uh, the fractured but whole is mm-hmm. uh, is is a uh, unquestionably. A day one purchase for me, and uh, and and so it's almost like I don't even care. But you're right; I just it was so fucking funny watching that. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know the premise about the superheroes. Yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just fucking great, and I, it, it's just awesome. The the thing that I I said at the time when we were watching it, uh, the outlaws uh, were watching it, is that what makes the first game so profound is that it is all of the parody and satire and humor of a South Park episode. It's an it's an interesting story for what it is, you know, as far as it being a South Park episode. But at its core, it is a really good, legit RPG. I mean, the, you're talking about the stick of truth. Yeah, the stick of truth. Like, yeah. like the the core fundamental gameplay mechanics would be good anywhere. Like it's really good, and I can only hope that that remains true for the fractured butthole. Uh, they, you know, what they showed off as as far as like like you know how they've kind of changed the combat uh, the combat. You've now got like a movement grid system and everything that you can utilize. I- I'm I'm there for it. I'm really really excited. A hundred percent. You know something that I don't know. Like perhaps people were kind of looking sideways at it first, but everybody seems to say the same thing. Like the more they see it, they're like, you know, that actually looks kind of cool. Is Ghost Recon oh, really? Wildlands? Oh yeah. I see. Now I I I thought it was the exact opposite. I was really looking forward to this game, and I was interested to see it almost. Most of the stuff I read, or at least, and I've only read a couple things, yeah. was was more like meh, meh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm st- they haven't lost me yet. I'm still interested in this. I I I dig the premise. I dig the location. There's there's a lot there's a lot that this game has to offer. So for, at least in terms of possibilities, there's a lot of possibilities to this game that I think could be quite good. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm still interested. This press conference did nothing. For me, if anything, it pushed the needle in the negative direction slightly. But but honestly, a big part of that, and, and this may or may not be stupid, I don't know, yeah. is is the fucking canned uh, game players, the same that you had like oh, we had for Division I, back I in the know. day. Oh, I got, I know, I know. It's just it's, so disingenuous, and it it makes me feel like you're hiding something from me because this is too practiced. Yeah, uh, and so it, it's, it was off putting, and and it left me. With no sense of like, this isn't gameplay. This is might as well be an edited trailer. I I, I agree, and that, and I'd like to see some fucking gameplay. The they should they should just fucking bring in a few crews of people and just let them play and just you know and just do it. Tango down, tango down, tango down. We don't need it. We really right. don't. Like, it's just it's show bullshit. Us the it's disingenuous. It'll be fine. It's disingenuous, and it makes me feel like you're trying to do some sleight of hand. And and, and so I didn't I did not walk away just feeling wise. I did not walk away from the Wildlands presentation and think, oh, this is this is interesting. I walked away thinking like, wow, that feels generic and shitty. I'm I'm still with him so far. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So overall, Ubi was it was less awkward. Aisha was less awkward. Yeah. Um the whole presentation I thought was slightly less awkward and than the EA one. Yeah. Um and uh certainly not as face punchingly groin achingly fucking painful. As what would come at, next. As the PC gaming uh, show. Actually, I think the PC gaming show, I think Ubisoft preempted that. I think the PC gaming show was already in progress, had, had been going for a little while when Ubisoft started. They did. I just switched yeah. them on the docket here. But uh, I mean, but yeah, let, let, just, let's jump up and down on the PC gaming conference's head for just a minute. Because, my God, this was terrible. It was horrendous, dude. Horrendous. 
It was this. It was this bad last year too. And it these, was these fuckholes did, did the same thing over and over. This is put on by AMD yeah. and PC Gamer. AMD, um, you know, had their little commercial within it where they talked about their new hardware and all that stuff. Yeah. And I don't even mind. No, that I don't. I don't give a shit. That's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and, and frankly, as a PC gamer, I want to hear about new hardware. But well, I mean, that, it's not like um, anybody else isn't getting on stage at E3 and hawking hardware. You know, I right? Mean, absolutely. I got. I got no fun? problem with that. It, it was the host and the format. It's a whole fucking thing from beginning to end. Oh. Half the people in the chat left they were like i can't i can't do it i left three quarters of the way in yeah uh the games i, I gotta say to go overall watch ubisoft that's how fucking bad it was well that's the other thing is how dumb are you that you're going to keep going through ubisoft's press conference who the fuck do you think is going to stay with you yeah. when, when you're doing the ubisoft so i you know there was there was uh, essentially nothing that interested me in the game wise in this whole thing with a couple exceptions lawbreakers um is the new is, is a new uh multiplayer only online shooter that i i uh I happen to get an alpha key for for this weekend. This, so I'll be this playing is the Blazinski game, right? This is this, this is a Blazinski game. Yeah, okay. Um, which looked interesting to me. I was watching. I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I've subsequently have learned it's free to play, which makes me think it's probably going to be shitty. Yeah. But uh, I think Cliff is really trying to create a free to play game that's a top tier game. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I got two words for him: Fallout and Shelter. Keep talking. <laughs> um, vampire, vampire, whatever the fuck you want to call it, um, from the Life is Strange team. <laughs> That's like that, uh, that Andrew kid from fucking Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> That's what I just flashed back to. Slayer of the Vampire. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the game itself looks maybe interesting, but what's really interesting to me is just what a fucking left turn that is from Life is Strange. Yeah, no kidding, right? Um, what about the, turn- the what about the turning test? I, I want to get to that Turing test. Yeah, excuse me, the Turing test. Let's get to that because that I that was something that kind of caught my eye. Like I stopped what I was doing in the division and actually kind of watched that a little bit. I don't remember anything about that game. It's the one that set like a uh, like it's it's a sci fi story. the The premise of which is what if there is life on Andromeda? And so you're you're going through like this you're going through like this base and You've got to, there's like, you know, doors that you got to open, puzzly type stuff. I mean, like, it almost, like, from what I was seeing of it, it almost looked like a Valve game or something. You know, like, it, I don't know, like, something about it I thought was very interesting. I, you know, I just, I just pulled up the trailer momentarily and I don't, I don't remember this. I remember them saying the words, the Turing test, yeah. but I don't remember seeing this. So I don't know if it was, I had tuned out at this point and was, was doing something well, else. I mean, it, it looks interesting. The, the incredible shittiness might have lulled you into a coma at this point. Well, I was certainly like I was browsing the web, looking at other shit. I wasn't. I mean, I was barely paying attention. I thought that looked cool, though. Uh, that that one is that's definitely one that I kind of came away from saying like that's on my follow up list. You know, of games and interviews and trailers that I want to check out in in the uh, next several days. Yeah, and certainly the Arma Three DLC is yeah, is going to be important to the Arma people and. Uh, Days of Infamy from the Insurgent team. Insurgent uh, was a great game. Right. Totally enjoyed that game with some friends. Um, uh, you know, I, I wish that... Uh, th- this is the other thing, is that the PC Gaming Show... And I don't know if they can't get these people there or whatever, but PC Gaming Show uh, focuses a lot on these games that are PC only. Right. Uh, you know, things like uh, uh, Warhammer and... Um, uh, what was that, uh, uh, what was that, that Siege game? <laughs> gameplay that we were seeing what was that from um no I mountain shit mountain was, blade yeah mountain blade right mountain blade stuff like that but that, there's tons I, of games really like cool. things like battlefield one and titanfall two i mean these guys these have big audiences are on uh pc and a lot of pc players play these types of games and i'm surprised they don't include that in the show are they able to do you think that you know do you think there's some know. sort of exclusivity with you know either the publisher press conferences or the or the uh well, Console certainly. I mean, it, conferences and well, stuff I mean, you have you have games like uh, you have games that show up in other that that you know that that uh, show up in other like on the in the console shows that maybe were yeah. also in their own separate shows. You know, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was in Sony's, and sure, sure. there may be things like that. But how could it, uh, how Deus could it be Ex- bad for EA to have Battlefield One in their show and the PC gaming show? Right, and talk about something exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Their show was first, and blah 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 blah. Um, but yeah, that fi- I, I just, I mean, I have nothing to say about the games because the show is so fucking awful that I couldn't, wa- I literally couldn't watch it. It's terrible. I mean, the, the, the sort of like the late night talk show format is not good. Like I get, I, I think on some level, like I get what they're going for. They're like, look, we want to be a little bit more laid back and casual. And 
I'm like that. That's that's okay. Like you don't necessarily have to have all the the bombast of you know the Microsoft press conference or the Ubisoft press conference. <laughs> you know Bethesda does a pretty good job of putting on a show that's pretty low key and casual, but it still has the presentation uh, presentation enough that it feels like hey we're doing something we're pretty excited about here and we've come to show it with you and that's the thing there's none of that kind of enthusiasm of i cannot wait to show you what i'm about to show you let me talk a little bit about it and then we're going to watch this trailer and oh my god we're all going to need to change your pants when it's over you know like there's none of that kind of presenter enthusiasm that you get from the other shows and and i guess i guess i want that i want somebody to come out there and say you know, this is going to be fucking incredible, as opposed to the guy sitting behind the desk, kind of half-heartedly doing it, making shitty jokes, and yeah, yeah it's just uh, they, they need they need a new format, they need a new presenter. Speaking of which, uh, Bethesda Brent, I did not watch the Bethesda press conference. You did are you? so you are so unlucky. You should be so jealous of me because I did. It's good. It was damn. Was good. it really? Yes, it was good. What are you talking about? They had the best conference last year. And you're acting like it's a surprise. It was good this time. There's nothing. There's not one game on here that I give a shit about. You're out of your fucking mind. All right. So yeah. number one, Skyrim Remastered. Okay. So they talked about Skyrim Remastered. They showed it off on PS3 and Xbox 360, and then they show the new version running on PS4 and Xbox One. And you're like, oh, that's awesome. That's really, really fucking great. Except unless you played it on PC, in which you're like, yeah, mods were doing. You know, mods made it look that good like two years ago. That's exactly right. But here's the thing. So this is the stock game, you know, so obviously mods, you know, there's always a performance thing with mods, you know, and, uh, and we all know that, but what I thought was cool is that on PC, if you own Skyrim and all of the DLC, or if you have like the legendary edition or whatever, you get Skyrim remastered for free. So that's pretty cool. Do you think you'll go back and play Skyrim again? I, I was saying today, Starbound and I were playing the division today and I was saying, I can feel myself wanting to go back and play Skyrim again. Like I can feel it coming on because my God, I love that game. Well, that's great. I, I think it's, you know, there's so much chatter on the internet about like, oh, that's awesome. But that's so basically you took all the work that the modders have done yeah. for the last couple of years and you've integrated in your game. You just and you're integrated charging. the best stuff. Right. And then now you're charging for it. I, I, I don't think there's any problem with it at all. I mean, like, like I haven't heard, I didn't hear you complain about, like, you know, the fucking Uncharted remaster or the, the Last of Us remaster or, like, any of those other yeah, fucking but, remasters. Yeah, but it wasn't community members that remastered it for those people. Okay, look, if they lifted code from the mods to put in the game and you can prove that in a court of law, that's one thing. But otherwise, I think that they just did the exact same thing that Sony didn't, and all Didn't they enable places. mods on the console? Isn't that part of the... Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I mean, this is totally uninteresting to me. I played the fuck out of Skyrim. I probably will never play it again. You're, you're, so, um, you're so lost. You're, you're, you're lost in the, in, in the woods. Dude, it's a point. great game, but there's just too many great games to play. Uh, um, I can always go I still haven't finished Skyrim. The Witcher 3, which I could spend as much oh, or more Jesus. time in than the Skyrim. Yeah, I've... I've you know what I mean? I've, I'm in the same boat there. Like, I haven't even started <laughs> on the fucking DLCs because I didn't finish the main game, which I got uh, Neither have I. I'm not, what am I going to do? Go back and play Skyrim when I've got the fucking Witcher 3 like staring me in the face? No, I don't think so. No, listen, but see, here's uh, the thing you keep forgetting about, Lauren. The thing you keep forgetting about is that science is right now beginning to develop the first round of drugs that will extend human life, okay? That means that we're going to have another 20, 30% of lifetime to play all these games. <laughs> and by the time I get there, there's going to be a Skyrim, like a fucking virtual reality, augmented oh, whatever God. Skyrim. I'll masturbate That's going to be a hundred right times larger than the current Skyrim. I'll masturbate right here for Skyrim VR. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. Um, so other, uh, the other games, they... So, what about Prey? Uh, I thought Prey had a cool trailer. Uh, yeah, I, I, I fail to see how the fuck that game is Prey. <laughs> I mean, literally, except for the name... I, I was actually disappointed by that. The game itself may be interesting. I don't think I, pl- I, don't think I played Prey, so I, I don't have like a, I, you know, I don't have a. Uh, I enjoyed Prey the first game. It wasn't great, but I enjoyed it. And there's not, this game doesn't feel. There's not one fucking thing in this game that feels remotely like the original game, right? And so I was kind of like, I, when I heard that the Prey had been announced at Bethesda, I was like, oh, cool! I've been wanting to see the next Prey. Yeah. And there's nothing about it that felt related to me, and so I thought oh, that looks maybe like an interesting game, but it doesn't look like a prey game. So, so I don't obviously I don't have that I don't have that kind of baggage that coming background. in. Sure, yeah. yeah so it, I I thought that was an interesting looking trailer. Yeah. Uh, Quake Champions. That's not really my that's not really my thing. I wasn't so much excited about that. I did yeah. think that like the I, I thought the and again like I'm not like Doom. 
I love Doom back in the day, but it's not like it's not anything I'm losing my mind for right now. It was a lot. I played. I played it. It's a lot of fun. I, I've, I've heard that. It's a lot of fun. Lots of people. Everybody says yeah. it's good. And I was Fallout Four. I played for twelve hours, and I haven't touched it since. I know people that have put you know as much time into Fallout Four already as I've got in Skyrim, which is saying a lot. Absolutely, but I'm not one of those. But people. Uh, I did think that like the DLC stuff they're talking about for Fallout Four, like what you can now do in your bases, that kind of stuff. Um, do you mean build the Rube Goldberg machine or whatever yeah, the, the fuck The Rube that Goldberg was? machines, the fact that you can build your own uh, vaults now, that's fucking cool. I love, I love the one shot where like you're seeing like the vault and it looks exactly like Fallout Shelter, like it's like that sort of, uh, you know, it, it's like a two D perspective, you know, looking uh, sideways into the vault. That was really fun. Of course, the biggest news of the conference are the expansions to Fallout Shelter, which just got reinstalled on my iPad, and I live, uh, I live in anticipation. Of uh, of being able to take advantage of these updates because that game is the shit. Uh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, there's so there's just nothing here that I'm interested in. The last one we didn't mention. Well, which think, again I'm I not really particularly agree that interested. That's in your fault. But keep talking. Dishonored two. I thought Dishonored two looked interesting. You know, did they show gameplay? Yeah, they showed gameplay. Yeah, I should probably watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll watch it, but yeah, I, I mean, Dishonored is like that game that I didn't get into at the time, but I don't know. Like I. I like as I look back on it, I'm like, man, I really should go back and finish that because like everything I see about it, it's like it does look kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I try. I went back. I tried to go back for that reason. It wasn't so. Yeah. yeah so Bethesda didn't didn't do it for me. I didn't watch the. It's kind of not on my radar because I didn't watch the just the, because of the time. It was on at like ten o'clock at night or whatever right. here. Um, so I didn't watch it in real time, and when I saw what they talked about, I just didn't really care. But well, it was um, it was my favorite of the despite the fact that Ubisoft had stick of uh, or excuse me uh, the new South Park game. Yeah, fractured, fractured butthole. Um, despite <laughs> despite the fact that that game did not appear in the Bethesda press conference, I still think I like the Bethesda conference the best of the publisher conferences. It's just because they have not yet reached the level of cynicism and kind of um, just douchebaggedness that the Ubisoft and EA press conferences abound in. And so uh, I, I, I still I, I, they didn't blow me out of the water the way they did last year. Like last year, Bethesda Bethesda won E three last year. I didn't feel that way this year, but I thought Bethesda still had my favorite publisher conference. All right, fair enough. So let's talk about Microsoft and Sony, the two we have left. All right. Uh, let's start, we'll start with Microsoft just because chronologically it happened first. Sure. Uh, and Brent, Microsoft had like sort of two distinct things going on. They had their games, and it was mostly games. Mostly. Um, which is great. A little bit of I hardware. love it. And Sony, Sony was all games, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I really like the fact that both, both major console manufacturers... The games. Really focused on games. Yes. I loved it. Um, it was a smart move. Uh, Microsoft did have this other component of hardware announcements. We knew Sony had said that the PS4.5 or whatever the fuck it is yeah. is real but wasn't going to be at, at E3 this year. So we knew that going in. Uh, Microsoft announced a few things. They announced the Xbox One S. They're slim. They're slim. Otherwise for, known is, as the Xbox we should have put out. To uh, begin the, with. Right. Uh, or the iPhone 6S. I, I, either way. Um, it felt like they were stealing Apple's nomenclature not uh, it's not it's that's not the only thing they're stealing from apple yeah right uh 299 <laughs> for the xbox one s which is smaller bigger hard drive no connect uh, port. uh no connect port i didn't catch that well i don't i don't know um, if they said that in the show but i, I think i read that somewhere i, yep. I, I, I so could be an- wrong I'll, I'll throw the caveat on i might be wrong about that they announced that they announced uh something that i thought was actually really cool brent uh which is fully customizable controllers mm-hmm like the colors, I think that's pretty cool. Now they didn't talk about prices, and if they're eighty nine ninety nine, then it's not so cool. No, because you can get in a fucking elite controller for that. Yeah, but but it's still a cool idea anyway. Sure, sure. Um, Project Scorpio. Yeah, man. Which is their their HD, their four K HDR six teraflop behemoth. Which I they kept saying six teraflops over and over, and I was like, whoa, six, six teraflops? teraflops! Oh, that's a lot of flops, man. It is. It's a whole lot. Uh, isn't it? I don't have a fucking clue what that number means. It does Well, the um, number itself doesn't mean anything. Right, I mean, the, it, the real question is, how much is it going to cost? Right. Well, like, that's one question, but the other question is, how much is it going to matter? Well, right. So I, I mean, ostensibly, there's a so there's 4K video pass through coming coming uh, is part of the idea. That's great. You know, I'm assuming that. This super powerful Xbox will be able to play games higher than 900p, yep. which seems to be the standard for <laughs> Xbox One. Yes, Ho- um, hopefully they are going to they are going to cross that threshold soon. Yes, but uh, um, and, and there's there's something brewing with the partners. There's a lot of talk in Reddit uh, and Oculus forums about Xbox partnering with Oculus, and you know they're that'd they're be a gonna, fucking great idea. It would be a uh, great idea if Microsoft partnered with Oculus 
and because they've got that whole crossover with Windows 10 going, you know, anyway, which I'll talk about in a second. That'd yeah. be a fucking great idea. It'd be a great answer to Sony VR, the Xbox, you, you know, Scorpio, whatever it's going to be called. Uh, you know, it seems like it'd be it'd be more than powerful enough to have like a really solid VR experience on a console. That all sounds like a really smart idea to me. What doesn't sound like a smart idea to me is announcing this system and the release window in the same press conference as, you know, because basically what you just guaranteed is that no one is going to buy an Xbox one S right. Well, I, I, so I go back to like Xbox one S is down. It's two ninety nine, which is, which is cheap. It, that's uh, fine, but why would why in the fuck would you pay two ninety nine for an Xbox One S this year when you know that you should just save that money for however much the Scorpio Xbox costs next year? A uh, Scorpio, I mean, I, I'm thinking if the Scorpio is gonna be powerful enough to run VR compellingly, it, it might be seven hundred dollars kind of thing. That that'd be a stretch. I, I I don't know. I don't know if that would be a smart idea, but I mean, you could be right. But I mean, I just I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know either. But I, it depends on what they're going for, and, t- and to me, that's the like. If they come in and say six ninety nine, then you got then you got an issue. I think. I, but I just but, don't see. I, I just don't see how it's a good idea to cannibalize sales from their own hardware division. Like, I can't figure out the logic in in announcing the slimline Xbox One and then making the big deal out of the Scorpio. It's just like, I, I mean, like you've just told people. Don't buy don't buy the fucking Xbox at One S. Whatever because we're do. building a better one. Because we're building a better one that'll be out, you know, in like eighteen months or something. Right. Like I just I can't see the logic of doing. I mean, I understand they got to have product on the shelf, and you know, so they got to have an Xbox out there. You know, maybe there's like some underlying issues with the Xbox One that it just makes sense to do a hardware revision of. So maybe maybe that's the the kind of the logic, and it's like, look, we're going to do a refresh no matter what this year, and we might as well just dress it up and make it as cool as we can and, and give it the price drop. So, like, I'm not saying they're wrong for any of this. Exactly. I'm just saying that I did kind of come away from it. It seems weird. Why the fuck would anybody get an Xbox One S? But anyway, Uh, that's just me. The other thing they talked about a lot, Brent, which I think is super fucking cool, is the buy once, play on two platforms. That's another interest. Like, like, to me, that's the sword that cuts both ways. I agree with Uh, you. I think it's a great idea. Like, as far as gamers go, great idea. You got a PC, you got an Xbox One, cross-play, all that stuff. Fucking fantastic. Who in the fuck needs both a PC and an Xbox One is the follow-up question, though. Uh, well, I mean, I have a... What do you mean? I have a PC and a PlayStation. Yeah, and that's, but that's my point, is that like what you can play on your PlayStation and your PC are kind of distinct from each other. What you can play on your Xbox One and your PC, less so. Well, the less, uh, uh, less so, yes, but I mean, I really like the idea that at no extra cost, I live in a, a household that has one television. Yeah. So I love the fact that for no extra cost and synced in the cloud with my saves, that if my wife wants to watch The Bachelor tonight, I can come play the game on my PC. But if I don't feel like sitting in my office to play a game tomorrow, I can play it on my console. Okay, I, I think that's fucking great. That, that, and it's, 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 I, I can see that. That is a tremendous value add to me. And just so, so significantly that with the price drop down to two ninety nine, I thought, God damn, I, I might just get an Xbox because I want that functionality of being able to choose if I play my games on on in the office in a chair with a keyboard uh-huh. or uh, in the in the living room on a couch with a controller. I why not? I want that. I've wanted it for like years. A, why not like a Steam box? Or, or, well, I, now, excuse me, not not the Steam box, not like the Steam machine, but like the little stream thing for uh, for Steam. The oh oh I, I know what you mean not not the the not an actual uh, not, Steam not box the Steam, but, not right. the Steam machine maybe it is called the Steam box I can't remember but yeah but there is a difference in that it runs that off of uh it runs that off of the what your Wi Fi network mm-hmm. right or you have to run a hard line I mean to really get to really really get good there's a lot of people saying yeah, unless you're, you're wiring you're it. gonna want a gigabit Ethernet right unless you're unless you're unless it's wired it's the it doesn't there's there's lag whereas this is actually playing it locally on your PC or playing it right. on your Xbox, right? Or on your laptop. Now, that being said, I do, I did, you know, PlayStation recently did a, uh, um, added the ability to do remote play on your PC. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've used it and it works fucking great. And I've actually played remote play inside of VR uh, and, and it fucking works fantastically. And so that is a solution. But again, Xbox, no, no extra cost. Yeah. So I think it's super dope. The problem is, Brent, like, so I see this and I'm like, God, this is fucking cool. Crossplay. I love it. Okay. Which includes crossplay 
uh, PC gamers will be able to play against Xbox gamers and now that, friends that's list. That's a good thing. That, that we could with have Xbox more gamers, like you and I could actually play, you know, mm-hmm. use our friends list and party up and play yeah. on two different platforms. Like that whole thing is, is I think, just f- absolutely fucking awesome. The problem is the breakdown was, and I was like, God, two ninety nine. Maybe it's time. Is that the? F- uh, and I'm not trying to be a dick here, uh. but the the games just don't, don't. They're not worth it. Oh, come on, me. Lauren. Gears of War four. Come on. Right. I mean, that's they're they're. It's not like the content isn't compelling enough, and then yeah. you watch something like the Sony presser, and you're like, it's like night and fucking day, in my opinion. I, uh, um, I well, and you know, I think that just depends on the kind of gamer you are. I mean, I think like certainly, of if course. you're the kind of gamer that really loved the Gear series, you grew up with it, then you're sure you're going to get then you're an idiot. Oh, <laughs> you're going to get excited about Gears of War four, right? Um, you're an idiot if you're excited for Forza Horizon three. I actually thought that looked okay. <laughs> My statement stands. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 I hate to call people idiot. I hate to pit, call people names for the games they like. But, no, I mean you know I, you know I, me, Brent. I like you. those shitty arcadey. I agree with you in that there's very few Microsoft games that come along that I am really excited about playing. I mean, the exclusives. Microsoft, yeah. you know, they score exclusives like Rise of the Tomb Raider that I'm excited about playing. But as far as uh, you know, like Gears of War four, like 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 tr- the true you know sort of like Microsoft first party kind of games, Gears of War, Forza, and all that. You know, th- those or Forza Horizon, the regular Forza series is fine. Uh, but yeah, th- those I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, more challenged as far as getting excited about those. I, I do wonder if, um, I do wonder though, if a couple of the things they talked about, as long as they're on PC. And again, this is like, I mean, that goes, that goes back to what I was saying earlier about why have an Xbox and a PC, you know, there's nothing that's come down the pipe from Microsoft yet that's made me feel like I need to get an Xbox. Like as much as they are, as much as they are sort of like, I don't know if unifying is quite the right word, but they are like just building like these huge bridges between the PC and the Xbox One. I'm fine with all that. I support all that because basically I do want to have the choice of playing Xbox One titles, like the, the exclusives that come along. I want to be able to play those on my PC. So the more they want to support those two ecosystems, I'm totally fine with that. Because I want to play things like fucking Sea of Thieves and State of Decay 2 and Dead Rising 4 and, you know, that kind of thing. State of Decay 2 is not an exclusive, is it? It's on the PC and Xbox. I mean, I don't know. Right. I don't know where else, you know, it might. I don't, I, I don't know if it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so of the games that Microsoft talked about, Brent, the, the only ones that really interested me were, um, uh, we happy few was a disturbing experience. Yeah, I, I thought that looked very cool. I'm I'm very interested in that. Not not a not an exclusive though. Uh, no. Um, and and, then, and honestly, the only other one that really grabbed me, State of Decay two, I thought looked interesting. Um, but the only other one that really grabbed me was Gwent. <laughs> I thought, well, okay, Gwent, I'm down for. Uh, I'm curious about Inside. That's that follow up from Lim. Yeah, I'm curious about that too. I'm curious about that Gwent. I'm way I'm way with you on we happy f- although i'm really really disappointed in cd project red for not doing this on mobile no fucking shit that is the first I thing i just, said that's the first thing i, I think I that said. is just the the biggest but i would play this game fucking constantly on tablet, and i would i would pay ten dollars for it or fifteen dollars or whatever yeah. and, and it's just i think it's a colossal mistake i can't understand how on the one hand they're saying like oh we listened to our audience i'm like no you didn't because yeah, honestly, I mean, I'm not really that interested in firing up my PlayStation or even firing up my PC to play Gwent. to play Gwent. I, as much as I'm into Gwent, I know I, it, it's such it's such a misstep on their part. Yep. It, and and the, given the reputation they have, it's it's hard for me to understand like how they misstep. Now, I brought up that same point with Fatui, and I don't know if he had read something, but his response made me think that that you know it's like an exclusive thing right now to like pc and xbox but that down the road it would open up to other platforms which maybe would allow you know tablet uh mobile device etc so i don't know again that's one of those that i need to do a little bit of reading up on yeah okay we happy few i thought look cool dead rising 4 i'm down for um sea of thieves I, i'm really interested in that actually like i really thought that looked fun and yeah, the guys in our chat were really into that too. I, I wasn't blown away by that. Yeah, I, I think I would love to play Sea of Thieves, uh, Halo Wars too. Like I always thought that like the the Halo Wars, uh, you know, like the RTS thing. I always thought that was kind of a cool idea. Uh, I, I could maybe potentially play that. 
And then State of Decay 2, I'm, I'm very interested in that. I, I, I thought highly of the first game, though I didn't play it uh, as much as I played like DayZ or something. But I'm very interested in State of Decay 2. I think that could be fun. Um, overall, though, Brent, I have to say, I, I almost called you, um, you know, uh, ha- after watch Microsoft was in the morning, right? Yep. Uh, and then we had, and I for, forgive me for the order. We had EA the day before, and then we had um, PC gaming and the Ubisoft presser. Um, and I almost called you after that and said, "Hey, man, I'm, I don't know if we need to do a show." Like I honestly, <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to be glib. I, I honestly like was so disappointed by uh, the EA press conference and the way they handled it. And the PC gamer press conference was unwatchable. Um, the Microsoft, I thought, was very sort of blah um and i I genuinely was like i I don't know that i have anything to worth talking about to be honest like there's i nothing has interested me so far uh and then came sony yeah well uh for my money sony again they really um they really knocked it out of the park and and it was a pretty simple straightforward affair of just let's show off some really fucking you know awesome games and 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 that's pretty much all they did yeah, I, re- I mean, they opened it. I, you know, I, I was joking around in the in the chat. They opened with the God of War demo, which was yeah, uh, I, I just f- uh, fucking astonishing in my opinion. I can't be. I, I don't think I could be more excited for this game. I mean, like, no, I, I remember the rumors. They were like, oh yeah, next God of War might be Norse mythology, and I was just like, I had the hard on to end all hard ons. I was like, you're fucking kidding me. That would be amazing, and they're fucking doing it. You know, like oh my god, I'm so I'm so excited. After about four hours, Brent, you should really go to the emergency that's, room for that. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it was it was a fucking astonishing, and I actually thought it was Horizon Zero Dawn when it first started. Right. Uh, and so there was a nice little like uh, I thought they did a good job of sort of tricking you in, but I was it was, and the orchestra was incredible, and then playing live, I thought that was a great touch. I did too. It was incredible, and so that God of War it opens up, and I was like, he Sean whatever his name is, I can't remember. She should just walk out, fucking drop the mic, and walk back off the stage. Yeah, pretty much. Like, literally, that's what he should do. And then, so, open up with this incredible God of War demo. I mean, fucking incredible. Uh, and followed by um, the last guy, and forgive me for the order, but it was something like, uh, was Detroit becoming human? I can't remember if that was next or not. I, I thought that... Or if it was Days Gone. I thought it was later. Like, I thought that they... It was later. I think it was Days Gone after yeah, that. I, I, because to me, it, it felt like it was God of War and then like Last Guardian, Days Gone. Last Guardian was third, oh, I remember. Because I remember Zero Dawn was fourth, I think. I, I remember saying, when, you're, when you have Last Guardian buried as number three. Yeah. So I kept saying at the beginning of this, like, if they opened with God of War like that, what the fuck are they closing with? It's got to be Red Dead. It's got to be Red Dead. Alas. And, and then when they get to number three, I'm like, when you have Last Guardian buried as your number three. Like it doesn't start it off. It's not at the end. Yeah. Like you have an sh- amazing lineup when that's fucking buried. Well, I, so e- I kn- either that or they've lowered their expectations for what the, oh, last, the last Guardian, Guardian is be, maybe, and they're trying to but do the, the same with us. The first four or five titles were God of War, Detroit Becoming Human, Last Guardian, Days Gone, Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, yeah. all of which are interesting games to me. I agree. Like Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn, I have like the strangest feeling for. Like I watch the gameplay, I'm like, that looks compelling. We're seeing crafting. We're seeing exploration. We have you know this huge open world, traversal, and and then you know like like the the enemy encounters, like boss fighting, that kind of stuff. Yep. I think it looks amazing. And then like I keep catching myself, and I'm like it's because it's just such a bizarro kind of world. You know the the, the almost like you know prehistoric, you know like prior to ten thousand BC kind of uh, you know kind of feeling with. You know, like robotic animals. I mean, like it. There's just something so incongruent about it, yeah. and yet the gameplay looks so compelling. I, I'm very, very curious about it. I want to talk about Detroit be, uh, become human. Um, yeah. I, I'm. You know, obviously, I know that you and I tend to be in the minority when it comes to Quantic Dream, David Cage, <laughs> and, you know, those games. Yes. But in watching the trailer for this. And seeing what they are going to be attempting to doing uh, with the branching storytelling and, you know, like the moment to moment choices having huge, huge dramatic, uh, you know, kind of repercussions and and wildly different dramatic repercussions uh, within within the same scene. 
I love. I've wanted to play a game like that my whole fucking life. I, it almost got me into playing that that uh, that kind of slasher flick game that uh, until yeah, dawn. Until dawn. It almost got me playing in until dawn because I'm so. I love the idea of those games. I've dreamt about playing those kinds of games for so long. I'm very, very excited about that one. Yeah, I am too. I mean, again, you, I know we're the minority. We heard, sh- I heard shit about it in the chat room, but um, I, I, I like David Cage and Quantic Dream. I, their games are not are far from perfect, far from perfect. And there's tons of memes and shit you can make fun of in those games. And and you may not like David Cage's uh, um, the way he speaks or, or even what he has to say. But there is nobody like him making video games right now. I agree. Uh, and I think he's pushing... Uh, he takes video games in an interesting direction, even when he fails. And I uh, I enjoy, even when he fails, I enjoy the direction that he is going. And I really liked Heavy Rain. Uh, I liked Indigo Prophecy. I liked um, Beyond Two Souls. Yes. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm on board. And, and it would be hard for him to get me to not buy this game on day one yeah i'm i'm very much in the same spot with you i'm very excited for it yep uh days gone days gone that was looks interesting uh, yeah it looks interesting i you know i kept i kept going i thought it looked really interesting the first time and then they showed more of it um and you know i mean i'd be lying if i said and i think i probably can speak for all of us that uh we're a little zombied out <laughs> i'm a little zombied <laughs> out um, I, I, but I felt that way since before the Walking Dead TV show started, you know? Yeah, and so, I mean, I, I think it looks really interesting. It's a whole new IP. It looks beautifully done. Yeah. I want to see more. Um, it's, it's, and I agree. Go ahead. Sorry, no, go no, ahead. No, no, no you, you finish. No, no, I was going to go to Horizon Zero Dawn. So Okay, well, just to, just to say my piece on Days Gone, it's interesting that they closed the show with that, you know? It's not the game that I would have picked to, to close the, you know, they, they gave that, you know, that big, uh, that big, you know, sort of gameplay uh, demo at the end and that's not the one i would have picked to do it like i just wouldn't have thought to do it but um it does look it does look interesting to, to, to me i don't know what to make of it i mean it's like a cross between i don't know like like the just like the sheer number of zombies that you're dealing with you know almost reminds me of something like um like dead rising or something but yeah you know, but it's not played for laughs in the least as a matter of no, fact, it w- like I thought that was a really dramatic moment when um, I can't re- like whatever Sam Wetworth's character is uh, or Whitworth, excuse me, whatever his character's name is, he's like you know chasing after that one guy. He catches up with them, you know they kind of they wrestle, they fall off the roof, they hit the ground, and the guy's like broken his leg or something like that. Like the desperation in his screams because he realizes like you know how he's about to die. Like it was a really stark moment. I mean, like like I thought that they 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 played that very um they played it you know for just the right kind of drama but i mean it was just like it was ridiculously insane i mean it, it was you know like that fucking uh, i am legend will smith uh movie like all over again it was just like you know like the fucking like tidal wave of zombies coming at you or i actually no, i guess i'm thinking of uh, world war z aren't i world war z yeah. yeah it was it was interesting and it was a kind of a weird mechanic because honestly the whole time i was like the fuck are you doing? Why are you even bothering to shoot these things? That's me. I'm just like run, I mean, I was, fucker, run. Yeah, I, I, I mean, what are you turning around for? And it was actually, uh, it made for a weird demo, if you ask me. Like that. Yeah, I agree. Th- that last few minutes, I, I, I didn't like. I didn't. So, is this a Dead Rising or is this like a survival? Like, why? I just is it a survival horror game? Is it open world? Yeah, is it? I, I don't it, know. It left, but but I'm definitely intrigued. It's a new IP and it looked beautiful and. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued to see more. What I was going to say um, about Horizon Zero Dawn about Horizon Zero Dawn is just I thought it was a fantastic, fantastic demo. The last thing I saw about Horizon, I was kind of going back and forth. It seemed a little cookie cutter. Yeah. Um, this demo was fantastic. The combat looked excellent. Um, I loved the different weapons that she was using, and uh, I, I just thought it was an, an outstanding uh, demo. And I'm 100 percent back in. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited about that as well. You know, yep. uh, a demo that I thought was really neat and I thought it was a cool reveal as well was resident evil seven. Yep. Watching the demo and kind of thinking about like, Oh man, this would be so creepy to play in VR. And, uh, and you know, I heard a lot of people kind of saying like, Oh, like, you know, it's a little bit like that PT demo. And apparently yeah. you can go download this and play it now. I haven't done it yet, but you can, the demo for RE seven, yeah, RE seven, uh, yeah. you know, you can kind of play the trailer as it were. A lot of people have, have drawn some comparisons to that in PT. I didn't play PT, so you know, like I don't know if that's true or not, but it, it certainly looked cool. But something about what happened, like at the very end, 
Like you know, you kind of go through the you go through the whole thing. You get the you get the videotape, and you know, it goes in the machine. And then there's a lot of kind of quick cutting and and images that are just like flashing by. And something in that, as I was watching it, I was like, "This isn't a Resident Evil game, is it?" And then all of a sudden, it's like that. You know, you see that Roman numeral seven, and then Resident Evil fades in around it. I was like, what a fucking great reveal. I mean, just, you know, like really, really cool moment. Uh, yeah, just, just great, great bit of media there. But as far as like that being like a VR title, holy shit. Well, it's going to be scary as holy fuck, Holy shit, dude. dude. It's going to be scary as fuck, and I, I think that's awesome. Um, it was really weird. So they went, they did Resident Evil 7, and they did PSVR stuff. Yeah, just like, just right? like a whole like little mini show right in the middle showing off VR titles. And then they went into Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Which you didn't know at first. Correct, and I was like the whole time. I'm like, what the fuck is this? This well, no, I mean, it was still felt like it was part of the VR segment, yeah, I've, and so yes, like Starbine and I had this exact same conversation earlier. So I was typing frantically into our chat, like, is this VR? This is well, I, I kept typing like, this is going to make a lot of people really sick. I was like, you guys don't know this, but you can't do locomotion like that. You can't just have a character running like that when you're sitting in a chair your brain just it doesn't make sense to your brain and yeah. and and then they showed him like floating in zero g and that makes some people really really sick yeah also and then they showed him in in a spaceship and i was like they've basically covered the th- three pillars of of simulation sickness like what like, not to do some one of these will make everybody somewhat sick and i was like they they just ensure that whoever plays this game and i was like Looks like an interesting game, but this is going to fucking just tank in VR. Yeah. And I just kept typing shit like that the whole time. And then finally they, re- they revealed it and we're like, oh, it's fucking Call of Duty. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> like, the thing is, like, I was watching it and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, this looks like, like, I thought, like, honestly, like, I thought it was going to be like, this is going to be like fucking uh, some new kill zone game or something. You know, this is going to be like Sony's answer to Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. And like I said, at the end, it's like Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, it was really weird. For me, it was a weird moment in the press conference that it was, it felt, I thought it was part of the VR section. I, I did. Well, yes, you, you are not the only one who, who thought that way. Uh, uh, I also thought it was part of the VR thing. But So two other games, Brent, in, in the Sony presser uh, that were, I thought, personally, both very compelling. Let's talk about Spider-Man first. <laughs> <laughs> From Insomniac. Yeah, man. Um, I always take... I'm, I'm there for that. Like, it's I am to a Spider-Man game, I'm there. I think it's fucking great. I take it with a grain of salt. Spider-Man games tend to be, you know, hit or really miss. That, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think... I, I haven't played a lot since... Uh, who, who, who did the, um, the whole Shattered Web... Uh, who, who who did that? I can't remember. I don't remember. I know what you're talking I, I was, about. I, I wasn't no a idea. huge fan of those. Um, I'm I'm very hopeful that uh, this turns out to be a great game. Uh, I was not expecting a Spider-Man game at all. I wasn't either, but it was it, it was uh, it was cool. It was a cool trailer. Follow up on it. See some gameplay. But um, i fingers crossed that might be okay. Yep. And then uh, lastly, Brent. Yeah. The man you thought won. E3. It's not that I think he won. He he won. He won. <laughs> he won. You have to understand, except for, except for the goddamn title. You have to understand that him winning E3 has nothing to do with what I think about it, and it has everything. Uh, it has everything to do with that fucking coffee mug. So anyway, he he starts coming down the ramp, and I'm like, and the, is that that that's Hideo Kojima? They gave him a big entrance, baby. I mean, of course they, they did. He's fucking Hideo Kojima. They gave him a big entrance, and he starts with, "I'm back, I'm back, motherfucker." Uh, so. Uh, Death Stranding. Death Stranding, which is a really weird name. It's a real. It's a really weird looking game. Uh, it was a really, really interesting looking uh, teaser trailer, whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, I mean, it was just a tease. Uh, obviously, starring uh, Norman Reedus, and uh, and I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the game's about. I don't know what to make of the imagery that we saw in the uh, in the trailer. I have no fucking clue, but. Hideo Kojima has done a pretty good job of making great games that I really didn't understand for most of my life. So I'll just have to keep on trusting him, I suppose. I thought it was compelling as shit, dude. It was weird, but it was super compelling. It was, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to make of it either. But uh, no idea. I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was fucking awesome, and I, I need to know more. I'm, I'll be very, very interested to see whatever it is at this point. I'm more excited about the fact that it's a new Hideo Kojima game and it's starring Norman Reedus 
than anything to do with the actual game itself. Because if you ask me what I think of the actual game itself, my answer is, who the fuck knows? Well, what game? Is it even a game? I don't know. I don't know. I, who the fuck knows? Again, you know, that, that I can answer any question you have about this game with who the fuck knows. Um, so that wraps up sort of all the titles. I mean, I, well, now, we I, didn't I think... really go into detail on the VR titles. Were there any, was there anything there that, uh, that you thought deserved some mentions? No, I was really actually surprised at the absence of dreams from Media Molecule, uh, because I think that's going to be a very compelling, um, uh, title for all right well i, I uh, want to bring up some things you fucking pc sure. elitist sure number one batman arkham vr yeah we just don't know anything about we don't it. we all we got was a, well that, that's true of most of those things i mean it literally it literally could be like stand in the bat cave and look around i don't think it's going to be that but again oculus fanboy on the fucking podcast um no, no, I, <laughs> that's not true that's man exactly i just what you just did the, the, it said it just they didn't no, say you're, anything you're right. about you're what right. it was. Okay, we, but we know Mark Hamill is the Joker is going to be in that motherfucker. We know that. Uh, I, I'm I'm very curious of what that you know like is it going to be like we went back and did all three of the Rocksteady Arkham games because fuck Origins. I'm in I, VR. Like I don't know if it's that if it's an yeah. Entirely see, I'm game. just concerned. I I, I, I have to say I'm a little bit concerned that Sony might not be paying enough attention to. Um, the the like I I came away from that thinking like that kind of locomotion is really that doesn't work or whatever like they need to I'm worried that Sony might not be paying as much attention to that as uh, other developers might and but I do I will say that I think overall I think Sony's going to have the strongest lineup because they have the strongest stable of game developers who have been doing game development sure. longest so I think they're going to have the most compelling content um, Star Wars in theory X Wing VR mission that fucking looks dope. Okay, now here's the thing about that. Like that's the one that I was kind of disappointed in, and here's why. Oh, uh, because why? it was mission singular and not missions plural. You yes. Know? Well, and that's what I'm saying. Like that left me thinking, like, what's Batman going to be? Is it going to be like a how twenty minute experience? Yeah, exactly. Like that's the thing. Is like I'm wondering, like, how many of these are really kind of games, and how many of these are sort of experience? Well, you know? Final Fantasy was another good example of that. So right. I was watching all that Final Fantasy stuff, and I was like. That this cannot like people are going to be fucking vomiting all over the place. There's no way. And then you see at the end of all of that, they're like Final Fantasy VR, and it's somebody standing in place shooting. Right, right. And so I, I think the last, I, whatever that was, twenty seconds of that whole Final Fantasy is what thing the game was the actual piece, v- the VR piece. Right, of it, right, right. right. I, I can um, see that. Um, for the X Wing thing, and you have to understand that I in some form or another, have basically been fantasizing about that game since I played X-Wing on the PC way back when, you know? And and being a guy that loved X-Wing and fucking loved TIE Fighter and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and Balance of Power and X-Wing Alliance and on and on and on, I am a Star Wars flight sim kind of guy. And the idea that there's going to basically be like a... Was it, actually, was it actually branded Battlefront? I can't remember... What was the actual title? I think it was. was I think Star it was. Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing Mission or something like that. Right. Um, but the idea of of like a Star Wars kind of flight sim-esque VR experience on paper sounds amazing. Whatever it's going to be in practice, I don't know. But the fact that it's Battlefront worries me a little bit, even though, let's face it, the one thing that everybody was really clamoring for the Battlefront didn't have was, you know, space combat. That's right. So, you know, perhaps this is sort of like a hold you over until Battlefront 2 comes along and unifies everything and puts it all in VR, you know, whatever. Um, but that worried me just a little bit. And then the other thing was the mission singular. It made it to me feel like it's more sort of like almost like a kiosk VR experience rather than a game. It's just, it, you know, remains to be seen. I, I felt like, you know, like I said, that final fantasy one was misleading about what the actual experience is going to be mm-hmm. The you're right. The X wing one said mission and the Batman, we have no idea what it is. You know, yeah. um, the, the one game that I am, it wasn't, they didn't talk about it, but Robinson, the journey mm-hmm. is kind of this Robinson Crusoe esque dinosaur. Oh, that sounds cool. That looks really interesting to me too. But you know, the other thing that people, you know, I kept saying, like, you know, people in the chat were like, oh, this game looks dope. And I'm like, you got to remember, it doesn't look like that in VR. It's got, it's like that, that crisp awesomeness you're seeing on the screen at 1080p. It's, it doesn't look like that. It looks like, looks a little bit, you know, even, even on the Oculus Rift. A little bit Rift, more fuzzy. Right. There's a bit of a screen door effect. And it's not necessarily 
it, it, you lose that and it doesn't necessarily matter, especially with the proper art design and design in general, but it doesn't look like what you're seeing on the screen. And the PSVR, I, I would assume, based on everything we've seen about technical specs, is going to be even slightly below that. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for PSVR to come out. I'm excited for the more VR, the better, man. What'd you think of, uh, what'd you think of the Razer uh, HK2? Uh, the, the, so I think competition is good and the cheaper people put, you know, experienced people like that put out headsets is going to drive the price down that much faster. Yep. The HK2, there's a couple things about it. It is a dev kit, although it's, it's, uh, for sale for consumers. And don't forget Sony's dev kits were that cheap also. Uh, I mean, Sony Oculus. Um, and, uh, it doesn't have three things uh, that make the other two headsets more expensive. It has no integrated audio or microphone, mm-hmm. uh, which, uh, is you know the the which is what the Oculus has at six hundred versus the four hundred of the of the OSVR, um, and the um, it doesn't have uh, motion controllers, which is what a big part of what makes the Vive eight hundred dollars, mm-hmm. right? So I think I mean I think it's great, but it's I mean in, you don't understand in terms of, in terms of specs. I mean certainly like the display technology and everything seems pretty solid. Yeah, well, one hundred percent. And there's there's something in there that's sort of nebulous and about how they're blurring the pixels to try and, and reduce the screen door effect. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I've not seen any reports on what the actual sort of real world effect of that is on visual quality. Um, but but these things, you know, these things matter when when you talk about the two hundred dollar difference between that and the Oculus, the headsets everybody says are equivalent to about one hundred and fifty dollar pair of headsets. So having the internal mic when I when I'm in social VR. I can't overstate how how important it is to be able to put the headset on, have have the headphones included, uh, have a mic integrated into my device. So when I'm in social VR, I'm just I just have the one thing on me with with uh, binaural audio, 3D audio, mm-hmm. um, and uh, the one thin cable coming out of the back. Yep. So uh, I, I think it's um, I think it's fantastic, man. I think it's great. There's another player. I think price driving down price like that will drive down prices of other headsets. But I also it's not like it, all people are focusing on is same same um, same specs of the display, basically, and the sensors for two hundred dollars less. And there's more to it than that. Yeah, do you know what I, I mean? I think that's a fair point. But it, it also, to me, um, to me, it sort of shows the you know where where open source and you know and, and Razor keeps talking about how you know like this is an open source thing. You know, like like the reason it's not you know, DK2 is not dev kit, it's hack, you know, it's hack kit too. You know, it's all about, you know, we're putting it out there and we're just going to like let people, we're going to let people bash on it and, and turn it into something. And, you know, then we'll, we'll move forward with it. And I think that's, that's great and everything, but it does, it does, I think, sh- show some of the, some of the limitations that taking that kind of approach to have where you basically just say, well, this is the piece that we're doing and we're going to rely on other people to kind of figure out, well, what's the best kind of motion control to have, you know, with this, you know, what's the best, you know, kind of surround sound system to integrate and all that kind of thing. And I could be wrong. I mean, you know, like, like people could like rush to the razor uh, VR headset and really turn it into something great. And then, you know, razor follows up a year later and does another piece of hardware that integrates the best things that the open source uh, developers supporting it have come up with that could happen, but I just, I have to say that at least right now, I feel like in my heart of hearts that that Oculus certainly and Vive will beat them to that. They'll beat them on that date, just because they don't have to wait on other people to figure those things out. They're actively doing it themselves. Well, that's right, and I just think it's you know the portrayal is that like, hey, this is this is equal specs and two hundred dollars less, yeah. uh, and that's just simply not the reality. Right. You know what I mean? And there's, I mean, you put on the. You pick up and put on the Oculus Rift, and, and and you understand what you're paying for. It is an elegant, complete consumer product right. uh, that has technology in it that that uh, and, and like components in it specifically, like physical components, earphones, and, and so it's just not a one for one. And I, I again, I think it's great, but I, I just don't think it's as big of a story as some of the outlets are trying to make it. Right. Well, yeah. I, I agree with you. The main thing that I the main thing that I like about the Razer. Uh, VR entry is is competition. I I, I like the fact that 100 that more people are getting into the space because that just uh, that just keeps everybody competitive 
and healthy drives prices down, so on and so forth. So, well, people, I just had this conversation with Aaron, my buddy, who was thinking about buying a Vive, and yeah. I asked him why the Vive over the Oculus, and he said, you know, I'm uncomfortable with Facebook, and it seems like they're trying to maybe lock down the ecosystem a little bit or whatever. And I, and I think that's something of a red herring. I really do. I mean, I think people, people, some people are very upset about what they perceive as to be the consolification of the of the um, uh, VR headsets on the PC and yeah. and hey this is the PC this is different and I think what people are failing to one of the things that people are failing to see is that ten years from now this isn't going to be fucking connected to a PC at all no it, it's, it's going to be it's, it's not going to have that's correct yeah. it's not going to it's all going to be onboard computing maybe it's fifteen years or whatever but it's probably, not going to be tied to the PC which is where we're so staunchly planting our flag and trying to. Yeah. Avoid closed ecosystems and avoid. And, and the simple fact is, is it is going to be a console at some point. It is going to be a standalone type of thing. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Samsung so, Gear VR is closer to what I agree with you. I think I think that Samsung Gear VR is actually a lot closer to what the future of VR is in the sense that you know it's just it's your phone, but it's just like a self-contained thing that uh, you know that operates independently of any other box around you or something like that right right now it's just that right now we need a bigger box to give us the hardware power yeah. to run it to the level that we want but like everything else what what i need a computer to do today i will be able to do on a on a phone chip in five years yeah, exactly yeah uh so anyway so but i think it's cool i think the competition is good and i'm not i told aaron i'm not like it's not all about being an oculus fanboy i'm a vr fanboy and i will Gladly switch to the Vive when they give me a product that I feel is more compelling than what Oculus provides. Right on, right on. Uh, yeah, well, so. that's certainly that's certainly my attitude. Um, one thing I want to talk about here at the end, we we, we kind of teased it early on, but I, I do want to just talk briefly about the the business model change that console gaming seems to be facing right now, with Sony doing this really low key confirmation. Andrew House was doing an interview with the Financial Times. Uh, late last week, in which he confirmed, yes, we're doing a PS 4.5 or a PS 4K, whatever you want to call it. We're doing that console, and it's gonna it's gonna be more powerful. And we don't really have anything else to say about it because it's not gonna be out until next year. So that's why we're not gonna really be talking about it at E3. Um, so he put the news out there, kind of diffused any sort of expectation that we'd see it at E3. And obviously, Microsoft uh, really talked up Project Scorpio and its six teraflops and all that. Both of those announcements, and obviously this has been brewing for a while since we've been hearing such strong rumors about them both for a while, but both of those announcements really do herald a change in the console business. And you know, we were talking about this a lot during the, uh, you know, during like the the press conferences in chat. Was that um, you're seeing Microsoft and Sony go to I think a business model that's a lot closer to Apple and Google and their mobile phone business, where I don't think they're going to be putting out consoles every year, but I do think that you could very well see new consoles every three years or something like that. And as opposed to new consoles being like this revolutionary kind of uh, change, it's going to be more incremental changes. And, just like you see like in the iOS ecosystem or the Android ecosystem, you've got your current sort of operating system version, their software that runs on it, games that run on it, and they support kind of a range of hardware. You know, like, like on the iOS, I don't know what it is on Android, but like on iOS, like generally speaking, whatever the most current thing is usually supports devices going back about four years. And... Um, and so, you know, you've got to, you know, if your device is four years old, you can still run the new OS, you can run the latest games, but they run a little bit slower. They might, you know, not look as good as the new hotness. It seems to me that that's where console gaming is going. Do you agree, and what do you think about it? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say right now, because frankly, this is the first time we've seen something like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, I mean, the 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 key is, is they have to give us something compelling, right? They have to give us a reason to buy it. Um, and, and honestly, we're not sure yet what the reason to buy the PS4K is or, or Xbox Scorpio, right? right? I mean, the, the, the Xbox... H higher you know, frame rates, S higher resolution is like what seems to be what we're talking about right now, but maybe it'll be more. Well, Who knows? But, but, well, we don't know, though, because it could be... I mean, there's the 4K video piece of it. That's, that's right? the one thing. I mean, like, I'll get a P PS4K, most likely, 
just to have a fucking 4K Blu-ray player. You know, like to me, it'd be worth it to sell mine. Right. And have so, that. so there's that. There's that specific piece of yeah. it, but they have not said yet that you're going to get high. You know, higher frame rates, or which is which is implied, but they certainly haven't said anything about higher resolution. Right. That you nobody said you're going to get 4K gaming. No, that, that right? all of that information comes from, you know, basically anonymous developer sources who are saying this is the specs that so, that Sony has showed us. This is like kind of the things that we're working around. But to be clear, none of that has been officially announced so far. Right, and so I mean, I would think, and, and tell me what if you have some other th- ideas, but I would think there's basically three sort of uh, arguments for the for the higher quality hardware, 4K video. Yeah. 4K gaming yep. and VR, yeah. right? And we don't know yet, like which one of those things they're doing it for. And if they're doing it for or maybe all of them, v- or, or maybe all of them. If they're doing it, I don't think 4K video is going to be enough to push consoles. If that's the only reason, um, no, it, well, if if for Sony's end, I think that Sony wants to do 4K to sell 4K televisions. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I have no doubt about it. But I don't think I don't think people are going to go buy a four hundred dollar 4K. Uh, uh, PS4K just because it has 4K video over I, a three hundred dollar one. I will, but yes, most yeah, pe- most yeah. People so might some not. people, right? Some people will for sure, but I don't think it's going to be huge. Now, VR, maybe, maybe not. We're not sure yet. And then, uh, you know, th- then you get into the weirdness of so if it's for for higher quality gaming, are console developers now developing similar to you know the way we do on pc where higher end rigs play at higher end specs you know frame rates but but what good does that you know what good is that going to do you on a you know the maximum it depends if it goes up to 4k or not right yeah i think that so and and doesn't make a lot of sense to do it unless it does go to 4k in my opinion like for gaming for for both i mean like to me like like the system has to support that's a lot of power it's got to support 4k gaming and 4k video and i don't just mean like the blu-ray i mean like streaming as well uh, right, and that's a lot of power right now. 4K gaming is 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 tough to push. So obvious, but you know, like if but if Sony gets six teraflops of their own, you know, then who knows? That's true. It's all about the teraflops. But, um, uh, so I don't know, man. I don't know it's just I think it remains to be seen. I don't know. Like it also could be, you know, 4K is a thing right now, right? Yeah. So if they do this three years later, it it doesn't mean we're going to be at 8K. And so they may not be no. able to advance the next console within three years. And I, I think, think they're, they're somewhat dependent. That. I think they're fine with that. Yeah, I, I think, but I don't know if it'll be like Apple or or Android, where where that three year cycle you alluded to is is a continuous three year cycle. Right. Uh, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know. I don't like. I assume that there is enough innovation on the console gaming side of things to justify, you know, like a new console every three years with some sort of minor adjustments. It's like it's it's definitely one of those things. I mean, like every year, you know, like when Apple when Apple comes out with their new phone, like you know, like this year it'll be the seven, next year it'll be the seven S. Every year, I'm like, okay, well, let's see what's different and see if I feel like there's enough there for me to, you know, trade in my current phone and step up. Or if and if not, then I'm like, man, I'll just stick with the phone I've got and wait and see what they do in two years. You know. Um, yeah, but one of the differences is that for Apple, it's their own device, so they're not. Whereas the console, I mean, remember, console is dependent upon your television. Or or some other alternative display, which may be VR moving sure. forward. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's a fair point. Um, Whereas, I mean, it's been you know ten years between 1080p and 4K, right. and there was there was no sort of like why would you release a console um, after you already had a console that was pushing yeah. that 4K? I, 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 you I, know, what I, you're I just don't there, know. There, there might be an argument to be made right now that with 4K televisions becoming a thing, becoming affordable and really good quality. And people being interested in like UHD as a format and all that, th- there might be a compelling reason to put out a mid-cycle console refresh this generation that might not exist next generation. That's exactly right. Now that being said, VR is 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 primed and sitting on the precipice of of being that display technology sure. that that absolutely could be rapidly iterating. You know, Oculus had said they think that the cycle will be somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three years. Right. So that if that is the case, and and VR is cycling it two to three years, um, and making significant jumps in display technology that requires significant jumps in uh, display processing technology, graphics processing that could be a driving force um, as well. That could be a driving force for a new console each time. Right. Absolutely. So those yeah. are all interesting things. It'll be. I'm just curious if I'm curious to see how consumers respond to it. You know, because 
like you say, I mean, like you know, the console or the the mobile phone business is not exactly uh, it's not exactly hurting at this business model. People seem pretty comfortable with the idea of buying a phone for you know however much they pay. Let's you know, let's I don't know, let's just say five hundred dollars. You know, buying a phone for five hundred bucks and you know getting another phone the next year or the or the year after that uh, with you know some some upgrades to it. You know, minor, major, whatever they may be. Console gamers. Uh, you know, are they as interested? Are are they going to be as willing to change? Are they going to be as willing to spend the four hundred dollars they've already spent on their Xbox or their PlayStation, and then three years later say, "All right, I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to go ahead and get the new one. Mine's great and everything, but I'd love to have that that 4K resolution or you know whatever the selling point is." Um, are they going to be willing to? Are they going to be willing to make that change? Or are they going to kind of be resentful of the fact that? Uh, that there's now a new product which they don't have to buy because Sony and Microsoft are both saying that, you know, these are going to sit right alongside each other. Everything that comes out is going to work with the console you have right now, so you don't have to upgrade unless you want to. Um, yeah, how know. gamers are going to respond to that? I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting, Brent. I do want to say one more thing about E3 that we forgot to mention. I kind of alluded to it okay. earlier, um, and that is Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, th- th- I-, I figured we kind of close with that. Yeah, so I, the, the truth, you know, there, there's no precedent for Rockstar unveiling a game at, at, E3. Uh, at E3 at I'll all, but but I allowed myself to believe it. Yes. There was enough conversation, Take Two making, you know, it was a parent company for Rockstar, saying that they were going to be at E3 in a big way, the map leaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I really, for whatever reason, it's my own fault, allowed myself to believe that it was possible. Yeah. Uh, and I will say that by the end of the Sony press conference, because that was my last hope, yeah. I was really disappointed. That it wasn't there. Uh it was a big letdown for me, uh, and and it 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 uh, it affected me for a couple of you know till the next morning. Basically, I was really disappointed that we did not get Red Dead sometime yesterday. I'm disappointed too, but at the same time, Rockstar being Rockstar, who's to say that uh, who's to say that you know next Tuesday morning we don't wake up and they've got the announcement trailer and a press release and a bunch of images and stuff, uh, you know, on the internet. Uh, Red Dead 2, I, th- I think it's clear that Red Dead 2 is coming. It's just a question of when. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I can't take it. I'll, ta- I'll take uh, Red Dead 2, but I, like almost even more than Red Dead 2, I want fucking Red Dead 1 on PC. Remastered on PC. Yeah. Um, so uh, the last thing, Brent, I'll say is that overall, I have to say I felt like it was uh, a very mediocre E3, honestly. Yeah. I don't know how you felt. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I didn't feel like there was anything. I didn't feel like there was anything too outstanding at this one. You know, I, I thought that, uh, God of War is probably the, there, there were, there were high points like God of War, South Park. I, I was certainly, I was, I was certainly very interested to see whatever Hideo Kojima's new game was going to be. I thought that, uh, Microsoft and Sony both had really strong conferences, uh, and and I think that both companies did everything they needed to do uh, at, at this E3. Uh, you know, it's been a very interesting kind of uh, console cycle, the way that things have gone this generation as opposed to last generation. And I think that both companies are are you know really uh, in pretty top form right now with what they're what they're bringing. So yeah, I mean, I thought it was I thought it was a good show. It it, it definitely didn't strike me as like. This is the show to end all shows. I mean, certainly not like that year that Sony, the year that like Microsoft had the Xbox One at E3 and like they really kind of fumbled the announcement, and then Sony basically spent E3 just kicking their ass uh, in their press conference. Like it, de- it definitely does not have that kind of drama. Uh, this this was was a little bit more of a, um, a by the numbers kind of E3. But having said that, there was some strong some strong showings as far as games. Uh, all right. Well, there you have it, guys. That's our take on E3 2016. We're doing just one show this year, so because uh, really all that's left is Nintendo, and who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as always, first of all, I want to say thanks to everybody, and I'm going to say this on behalf of Rent as well. Thanks to everybody uh, who watched the press conferences with us and chatted with us, yeah. uh, whether it was on Mumble or in chat. If you guys don't know, uh, we have Mumble channels on the left side of the of the website. You should check them out. I'm in there. Very frequently playing with Overwatch lately, but uh, we got a lot of players that play a lot of different games. You should check it out. Um, but uh, as always, we appreciate your participation. We want you guys to sound off in the comments. We want to know what you guys thought. 
what were the best press conferences, who won, which trailers stood out to you, which one pissed you off, uh, how, how good or bad did you think Aisha Tyler did, that kind of thing. Let us know in the comments. As usual, he is Brent Adams. I am Lauren Baumgarten. And remember, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing.